Recently, we've been doing a series of open source at Google Tech Talks, and this has been limited to um, Googlers that are producing open source or um, are interacting with the open source community. Um, we are now trying to open that program up to outside contributors, um, mostly people we know through like Summer of Code. And today that brings us Matt Hanley from the Adia Project. He's previously a Summer of Code student, and this year he's a Summer of Code mentor. So um, he's going to talk to us about Adia today. And, uh, please welcome Matt. Uh, so, uh, you know, I guess before I before I get too much into the presentation, there is this disagreement among developers on how to pronounce the name of the software. So, I call it Adium. So some of the other developers call it Adium, and uh, this is, goes on to time of memorial, and so it's not really worth discussing here. But uh, for the moment, uh, I want to introduce you to uh, that duck in the corner there, up the left corner. This is A to me, our mascot. I'd say, I'd say hi, A to me. Hi, A to me. Excellent, all right. And uh, A to me says hi back. So uh, get started. You may be wondering what exactly A to me is. Uh, a is an instant message client for Mac OS X. Um, and let me refine that. It's actually the best instant message client for Mac OS X. All right, it's the best one for a variety of reasons that I'll get into later. Um, but A to me is, it, is not just being a greatest message client is also uh, open source and it's on the Macintosh and that's kind of special because there isn't as much open source on the Macintosh as there is say for Linux or is uh, uh, in sort of other communities. Um, so that makes Anium kind of an exemplar in the Macintosh open source software community. So in examining Anium and trying to figure out, uh, examining its history, kind of charting its progress, we're going to get a we're going to get an idea about kind of how open source works and kind of how uh, some of the favorite stories that I tell about Adium may be some of the favorite stories that you know from your own open source projects. Uh, so I'm just going to overview of the talk. I'm going to talk about the history of Adium, which is by these old faces, kind of these early years, kind of matured into a better piece of software, it got popular, and it kind of joined the rest of the open source party. I'm going to talk about its impact and its uh, current developments that are going on now and what we're going to be doing in the next couple of years. So in the beginning, uh, ADM looked like this. And, uh, and if you've ever created an, uh, open, uh, a piece of software on Mac OS X, uh, you know, you'll find this very familiar. This is a project builder project before Xcode. And uh, here's my interface builder window. Well, it's being run at the moment. And there's just a couple buttons, on, off, send, this buddy's update. And this was the original ADM. Uh, it, it began because this guy named Adam Iser, who was a college student at the time, wanted to teach himself Coco. So this was about 2002. Uh, Coco just kind of came out in 2000, 2001 with the introduction of Mac OS X. So he's like, I want to learn this new Objective-C language. I'm going to get my hands dirty. So he created a program called Coco AIM. And at the time, it only supported AIM. And he developed that by himself for a while and eventually made this little nifty chat program. Uh, as the, uh, of course, one of the one of the things you need to do when you're developing a software is design a logo. So he drew that logo on the upper uh, left-hand corner. It's a it's a messenger bird. You see the messenger bird. Um, well, many people didn't see a messenger bird, and instead they saw uh, a duck. So, ADM was uh, so Coco AIM was renamed to A D I U M C K. Did you get it? To get it, you see, it's like a duck and adium. Like, well, a lot of people also didn't get it, so they just dropped the CK and they called it adium. Uh, so, of course, in the beginning, the development was just it was just an AIM client. It wasn't this multi-protocol, customizable beast like it is now. They just really focused on doing AIM well. They used this old TOC, this old talk library to implement it. And the talk was provided by AOL. And they, of course, the actual AOL protocol is called Oscar. It, it lets you do all these fancy things like change status messages and send images back and forth. But Talk was sort of their freebie, slimmed down version of that, which wouldn't even let you do things like change status messages. So in the original version, so, it, so in this early versions of Adium, in order to change the status message, you used AppleScript to tell iChat or uh, AOL's official client to actually change the status. So if you did all your chatting in the Adium, then you want to change status, you use a little hack to get it. So, of course, development at this point is just, uh, just Adam managing everything. So everyone sent 
Adam needs patches and he emerged and everything by hand. No source control it like that. But as these people kept using this little chat program, and as everyone wanted a feature, they would just submit a little patch and it kept, it kept getting more and more powerful and more and more useful and more and more stable and uh, it really gained a loyal user base. Now as the people started using it and, and started demanding, you know, my patch be accepted and, and uh, this person's patch, they started really debating and mailing lists, wars, I'm sure all sorts of fun things started up. Um, uh, they transitioned to, to SourceForge. So they had a SourceForge CDS sort of set up. And uh, uh, you, have to, you have to understand here that the developers at this time are, are pretty young. So I, I'm 24, and soon we'll be 25, and I'm one of the older developers that have worked on this. I was shocked to learn this. So uh, Adam Eiser, I mean, he's probably a little bit older than I am. Uh, Evan Schoenberg, the current developer, he's younger than I am, and uh, about my age. And uh, it's true for most of the developers there, which is Really striking. Anyway, so these guys are, are new at development. They haven't really been exposed to professional software development. So they don't do feature releases where they say, okay, well, version 1.0 is coming out. 1.0 is going to have X, Y, and Z features. And then we're going to ship 1.1, which has new features. No, they just sort of add in patches and patch and patch and patch. And so everyone ran the nightlies. Everyone ran the nightly versions. Because the feature release was like a year old and no one had ever used that because the, the nightlies have all these new awesome features. And as a result of the fact that pretty much everyone could contribute these patches and it kept getting cooler and cooler and better with a piece of software, Adium kind of became like this little hacker client. Because in order to really run the best and latest and greatest version, you had to compile from source. So you're restricting your user base to just these hackers. And you can customize practically everything. So at this point, the developers, they've uh, uh, they sort of guided ADM all the way up to version 1.6. And version 1.6 was the last sort of original ADM release. This was still from iOS 10, but it was the original ADM release. And they set their sights on creating ADM 2.0, which was so customizable, it would grab your pants. That was the slogan. That was going to go. So when these features started getting added, you can control everything. And some of these magic keystrokes are actually still in ADM. So, uh, uh, Things you may not even know. This is my favorite one. I just learned about this one. In your sent, in your your text window that you type, there's this queue of these buffers there, and you can browse through this queue by using the control up and down keys. So, so let me get an example here. So, uh, say I'm uh, say I'm talking to my friend David or something. So uh, uh, I could say, um, this is an example of the message buffer. Okay, I haven't sent that message, but I can type control down, and now I've got a new window where I can say something else. And say that, and then go back up to my first buffer, and I've got my original message there, all right? And th that's not documented anywhere, right? That's, no one knows about that, but it's in there, right? There's all these little magic features in this time. So this time in the in open source, or, or, or in ADM's development, it was like we've got to add every feature we possibly could. Um, so at this point, though, uh, and there was an aim. It, it, ADM did aim pretty well. And there had been sort of a, an attempt at sort of an MSN client, but it wasn't really sufficient to take advantage of a lot of MSN's sort of weird quirkiness. And people really wanted MSN. And so ADM looked to its neighbor. Oh, OK, yeah, that's strange. I have destroyed my PowerPoint presentation. Hold on a second. Are we back? All right. Pretty good. So th at this time, uh, AIM really wanted to become this multi protocol chat client. Uh, and they wanted. Uh, but they didn't really know how to do that. So they looked to their neighbors in Linux land, and there was this tool there called Game. And, and, and so, so this was the GTK uh, AOL Instant Message Protocol. And these couple of guys wrote this great piece of software. And these game people, they were chatting in you know, uh, 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 AOL Instant Messenger, and they could do ICQ, and they could also do uh, MSN, and they could do Yahoo. 
and they can do all these little ones, you know, Gadu, Gadu, QQ, all these little big ones, and they have no problem. They were having a great time over Linux land. And so the, these Mac developers said, you know, we really want to use your protocol code. And when they looked at the code, uh, they found that it was pretty much this complicated mess of, of user interface, GTK stuff, combined with the actual protocol code. So they were able to convince the developers to separate these into two sort of pieces. One, the user interface, and two, this library, which was able to do all of this protocol business. And they called it libgame. And libgame, of course, was very, very not talked about, very, very undocumented, very, very didn't want to you know, risk the wrath of AOL. So, uh, but, but Adium just sort of borrowed that and added it. So suddenly, Adium could do everything that uh, the game could do. And at this point, really, the source for CDS kind of didn't stop working for them. They got so, so popular, everyone was doing so much craziness with my base and whatnot, that they really said, we really got to switch to subversion. So they, they did so, and they switched providers. Um, but at this point, the, the, this ADM client is still incredibly customizable. So for instance, I've got a couple screenshots of ADM, what, what would have been ADM 2.0. I think it's actually ADM 1.6. So this is the uh, screen, if you want, to configure the dock icon of ADM, all right? Let's you choose the color, let you say exactly how fat, fast the icon should flash, you know, when everybody does something, you know, when it appears them. You know, exactly how large the body text should show up, whether or not that should automatically adjust size, whether or not it should be a fixed size. I mean, th there's so many options here. And just for the dock icon, I mean, for, this is for statuses. I mean, you can set the color of each one of the various uh, you know, uh, names or buddies in the contact list, and you can say oh, how fast I want that status icon to flash. And, I mean, this is this is nuts, right? And there's pages of this. So how, how, how would you want your interface to look like? Single window, multi window? You can do whatever you want. Anything you can customize it to it, look however you want it to look. And uh, it just, this becomes overwhelming, right? So, so many options, so many preferences. So in about, uh, about 2004, 2005, at this point, uh, some new developers came on. Some old developers left, and some new developers came on. And everyone pretty much realized there are way too many cut options. And this is becoming overwhelming. So they said, rather than going for so customizable your craft advance, to so easy your grandmother can use it. And they did this by not taking out, well, they, they did take out a few of these customization abilities. What they do is they just really chose a lot of sensible defaults for them. And these sensible defaults meant that someone who didn't really know what they were doing can just go to pop on and use ADM and still get a lot of benefit out of it without having to go to all this craziness of customization. So the goal here is not to overwhelm the user with options. For instance, one of the ways they made it really easy was rather than using their own custom-built message view, which shows all the messages in a the chat, they uh, borrowed one right out of another piece of software called Colloquy, which is an ICQ, uh, or IRC client. And uh, it was built off of WebKit, which is this Apple's piece of software that, rendered, that does all the HTML rendering behind Safari. So uh, that message view you see when I'm typing is really just a big HTML page, and using some JavaScript to cleverly add the chat messages at the bottom. Now, this, uh, what lets people do is lets them come up with a really wide variety of, of you know, ways ADM looks. The middle one is sort of the one, one I like, sort of the default one. But there's also other ones, you know, you have a really dark one on the left, or really light flowery one on the right. And people who are not programmers can, you know, do this. They just have to know a little bit of CSS, a little bit of HTML. In about 2005, the original developer, Adam, becomes busy, busy with other things. If you're following along, this is about the point where he graduated from college. So when he graduates, he gets a job, I think, at Amazon, and goes off. And, uh, and by this point, eight of the, uh, his life is so complicated or whatever, too busy, and he has to retire from the ADM project. Now, in some projects, this would be, might be a death knell or something. But in ADM, it has such a large number of developer base and such a large number of users using it that it doesn't die. It, Evan Schoenberg just steps up, becomes the lead developer, and ADM keeps right on going. And, uh, and about this time, of course, Google starts with their summer of code project. In 2005, this is a perfect opportunity for these small, small, quote unquote, open source projects like Adium to get on board and really participate and really get a lot of cool features from this talented pool of college students. 
Uh, but they missed the boat that year. They don't know about it, they don't hear about it in time, so they miss it. Someone, probably Leslie Hawthorne, probably someone up there, said, hey, uh, ADM developers, you need to do this. This is a mistake for you to miss it this year. Next year, don't miss it. So in 2006, they got a board. Now, uh, uh, there, there, uh, there are a few things that were implemented during this, during this time. Uh, XMPP support, uh, which is Jabber, using uh, a library called SPAC, which is this Java library. All right, so, so we started moving away from libgame and trying to implement this whole thing using Java and this Cocoa to Java bridge. Uh, and that was, of course, was done by Andreas Monitor. We added some disability support, which really improved the accessibility of the application. And we had these really cool tabs, like ADM tabs are really fun. They're not just statically, you can drag them around, you can put them on the left, the top, the bottom, the right, and you can really customize them in a lot of ways. And that, that was really done by Ken Sutherland, uh, who's gone and does all sorts of other fun things. Um, so they're sort of, at this point, they're sort of flirting with Java. There's this, there's this guy wrote this new version of something like LibGame, but he called it Josker. And it did pretty much everything that LibGame did for, for, for AIM and for other protocols, but it was in Java. It had some this reliability and had uh, 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 features that were really nice. So it really did a much, much better job with Java threads rather than um, LibGame's event loop. And it really did a lot of things just really a lot better. So uh, when ADMX 1.0, I mean, this is the time when it was very cool to end your macOS applications with an X. So when ADMX 1.0 was supposed to come out, they said, we're going to use Josker instead of LibGame. And using this magic Coco Java bridge. So ADM's written in Coco and Objective-C. And we can call Java and use it as if it were Objective-C classes. And so they're flying, flying pretty high in 2006 here. Uh, because during that, that summer's worldwide developer conference at Apple, uh, Apple shows off its new compile times of its new product, Xcode. And uh, uses Alien as an example app for build times. So, and even now it still does. This is a rapid page that's there now. This is their Xcode 3.0 build project. And here it says results based on a build time of Alien 1.2. Right? So this is a big deal because this is this little open source project being notified or being, being noticed by Apple, which is, you know, good, good company if you're a Mac person. This is, that's pretty high praise. Um, however, during that same Worldwide Developers Conference, uh, Apple deprecates that Cocoa Java bridge. So as much as the work that you know, Andreas had put into trying to get this Java, Java support with the Smack library, as much as work they put into using Josker, that all had to be scrapped and they had to immediately throw a live game back in. So in uh, 2007, Summer of Code came along and they re-implemented all the Java stuff in Lib Purple, which is now the new official name of the game. And when it this ability to unlock groups, which is a really handy feature. You can have separate group panels to have a lot of groups running around. Uh, there's a really nice bonjour support in case you just want to ch chat with people on your same subnet. And of course, then I come along. Uh, my goal is to expand Apple's group support. So here's my slight aggression from Adium to talk about me, uh, my summer code experience. I had coded a little bit. Now, I have a computer science degree from St. Olaf, and I've done quite a bit of coding. But I really didn't, hadn't been involved in open source. I'm a Mac user, you know, I'm kind of out there, I was fine with what I had, fine with the Apple products, didn't really get involved in open source. And it was sort of this weird thing to me, because I, I didn't really know what I was supposed to do so much. I didn't have that you know, spark you need in order to really go and do something. Uh, I had this desire for a feature I was going to go implement. I didn't really have that yet. But I needed an extreme summer job with extreme flexibility, because this summer, I had four weddings to go to, which is you know, crazy. And I had two really long weekend trips, and I had a pregnant wife. And when you combine all these together, you don't want a job when you're gone 40 hours a week. You know, I can't, I can't do that. And uh, so this, this all seems like it was some code rip in my thing, except uh, I never used anything but a Macintosh my whole life. I never programmed on Windows, and not a Linux guy, so this is not really my realm of expertise. So I'm looking through the list of software, you know, it's a big, huge list of two columns, clicking on each one. But right up in the top, there's this program, Adium. I've heard about Adium, I know my friends have used it. So I, I checked it out, and it turns out it's a Mac OS X application. And they do Cocoa, which I know how to do. And not only that, at my old job, I did a lot of AppleScript extensively. And so, hey, I can do this product that they're recommending, where you 
implemented Apple Script Dictionary for Adium. Because Adium's implementation was a little, a little scary. Uh, so I spent the whole summer trying to improve it. And you know, three months later, I, I succeeded. And it felt great. Because now, and my, my features, uh, or my, my changes were implemented in Apple Script and Adium 1.2. So if you use the new version of Adium, the app, wealth of Apple Script at your fingertips is amazing compared to what it was. And if you have any regressions or bug fixes, you can talk to me after the talk. Uh, so my advice, anyway, to new summer of coders is to don't be afraid to make mistakes. Is not to uh, sort of pull back and worry about what happens if I change this. I have my own branch. It's the branch and I can do whatever I want. I could have rewritten the whole thing to be a flight simulator if I wanted to. And there's, no, there's nothing that stopped me. You know, whatever I did was, 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 uh, was safe from harming the rest of the development. So I should, I, 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 if I'd gone back, I'd be much more uh, forthcoming in trying to implement this change or try to fix that or try to change this. And so I'd recommend that to new some recorders. So don't try to uh, new and brave interesting things just to see what's going to happen. Anyway, back to ADM. So the native features of ADM nowadays, pretty much up to the modern day, is uh, these tab chats. Now, of course, they're very common. But back in the day, and ever since ADM was had them, they've been these totally life-saving features where you can organize your 10 different chats you're having at one time into just a single window. It has that amazing WebKit message display, which I've talked about already. It has these things called extras. So in an attempt to make things easy to use, uh, they've really leveraged Apple's plugin architecture so that I can say, I want a new set of sound effects for my ADM, and you can just drop in this one file into the application support folder. And voila, ADM recognizes that, and I have access to all those sounds. Or if I want new message displays, I just drop out a new file. It's very simple to do, and it's, and of course, Apple's plugin architecture is very intelligently designed, very easy to do. So pretty much anyone can do it, even if you're not a program. So pretty much everything is customizable still. Emoticons, doc icons, status icons, the message view, and sound effects. It also integrates very well with OS X. So if you're, in your, if you're in the address book application and you're coming across a record there and you want to send a chat to someone, you can just click on there and say, I'd like to send a chat using Adium, and Adium pops up. Uh, custom great, app script. So if I wanted to send a message to my wife, uh, I use this app script to do so. So make a chat with contacts, contact people at UK, with a new chat window, and I tell that chat window, please send a message, hi. And the Apple script is support is pretty clever unless you do some pretty amazing things, if I must say so myself. And also it integrates very well with Growl, which is a notification system. So when a buddy comes online or when I see the chat and sound like from this application, I can get notification of what's going on. And also, if you haven't played around with the preferences of ADM, it's also got this event system, like the, the basic format is when X happens, do Y. And X can be things like someone comes online, uh, it's a Friday, uh, the, the sun has crashed into a nearby star. I don't know, it can be a lot of things. And when that happens, you can do 10,000 other things, including run an Apple script. So pretty much you can do anything you want. Uh, which, this is a very powerful, very easy to use mechanism. Uh, it also, for those security conscious people, supports off the record encryption for those people who don't want anyone else snooping on what they're doing. It supports it very transparently, very easy to use. Uh, it also does automatic updates by the Sparkle system, and if you haven't used Sparkle, and if you've been trying, if you've been doing something more complicated, you'll be amazed at how easy this is. You just every week, every week, it automatically checks the Adium's app cast and says, "Hey, there's a new version." It'll ask you, "Do you want to download that version?" You say, "Yes, I'd like to download it." It'll download it. It will install it, and relaunch the application without you having to do anything, which is so. So nowadays, uh, for this year's Summer of Code, uh, people were asking themselves, what should we suggest as projects? We took care of some of our biggest pet peeves, the Apple Script being one. But what are you doing, doing for this year? Uh, at this point, Evan, our lead developer, knows, I don't know, 60, 70% of the code base pretty well. And he's the only one who knows such a large amount of that code. So people's, people started worrying that maybe there was a high bus factor to this code. Maybe that if Evan, were, if Evan were suddenly to become very busy with the medical school he's in right now, uh, maybe the development would sort of cease. So we really want some kind of automated test, some kind of way to ensure that other people can work on the code, can add those features, and they won't break some small subsystem over here. So uh, 
there's a couple of tricks with this. One is that a lot of what ADM does is over the network. So that means we're going to have to do a lot of locking of our objects for those people familiar with unit tests. And also, because ADM is, besides the, the network part, it's also a big GUI part. And so we've got to do a lot of GUI testing, which is not very easy to do using unit tests. So in order to kind of get around that, we've had some excellent applicants this year. Um, the behavior-driven testing, behavior-driven testing uh, uh, project is done by Arcadia Ruby Garcia and mentored by Colin Barrett. And uh, he's going to create some uh, a framework which lets us be able to script uh, our GUI uh, very simply and say, just test our GUI automatically. Um, BJ Homer, which is who's my student and Peter Ho's co or co mentoring this year, uh, he's implementing a bunch of unit tests for just the low, more low level subsystems and doing a lot of the mocking. And finally, there's a, a data detector, a data detector system or, or project suggested by Jeffrey Foster. And he's working on, um, that's a system that's new in Mac OS 10.5, which I haven't played with yet. But it lets you sort of uh, uh, treat certain data or certain text in a very special way. And so he's going to do a lot of, uh, so, so, so it can be used to, um, like, like a, a simple example is, I think, is to, uh, if you give a, a hyperlink in the text, it will realize it's a hyperlink. So when you click on it, it pulls up the browser. There's a lot more flexibility you can do with that. And I think these data detectors that he's going to do uh, um, maybe some more interesting uh, things, uh, more interesting effects besides just opening the browser. And so he's going to do a lot of the background work to get that taken care of. Um, so these tests that we're implementing should allow for more people to implement new features, uh, development to progress a little bit faster than it had been, has been. So overall, the impact of ADM has been uh, in the early 2000s. There were there were three open source, or there were three chat programs for the Mac that were multi protocol You've got, uh, you've got FIRE, which is a GPL program, Proteus, which is a shareware, and ADIAN, which is also GPL. FIRE and Proteus, though, sort of lost momentum over time. FIRE sort of, uh, sort of, some of the FIRE developers shipped over to ADIAN, and then the rock development sort of stalled, and they decided we're not going to release any more versions. Proteus, because it's shareware, because it's commercial, it's a little bit harder to track the development. But they say they're going to go open source for a while, but they haven't, and I think they're just a little disorganized in trying to find a way there again. Um, so lib game, of course, as I've said, has come from ADM. So other chat programs that exist that use lib game are I have all this functionality as a result of convincing those game people to separate their library and their GUI code. Uh, a lot of open, a couple of pieces of open source Mac software have come out of ADM. So Growl was originally an ADM only thing, and they said, hey, this would be very useful for other applications. Let's release it as its own. Let's release it as its own beast. And so I did so. And there's also this new one which has just come out quite recently called Auto Hyperlinks. And this is something which sort of identifies any, pretty much any kind of uh, URL looking thing in text and can change it into uh, HTML, which is the correct HTML for that link. Uh, right now, I've been told Adium has over 200,000 users, which is pretty good because the uh, all Macs come with iChat. And iChat, of course, is, does a lot of what Adium does. So these are people who want something beyond what iChat has. They want some more functionality. They want some different protocols. They want something, want something better. In, turn, in the land of uh, future development, uh, there's been a lot, a lot of talk about voice and video support in Adium. We really wanted voice support for a while, now video support. So chat-wise, Adium does a lot of what it shouldn't do. So in just a couple of more versions, ADM is getting pretty much done when it comes to just text. So there's been a lot of people wanting to do voice and video, and there's been a lot of attempts by the developers to start getting into that, but they're not experts in this field. They've sort of been stalled in a lot of regards. They really haven't gotten anywhere. The new uh, Mac OS, Leopard, has some really nice features that should let voice and video be a lot easier to do. But uh, again, people are, well, we need someone to take the lead and say, I'm going to do the voice and video and, and just do it. <laughs> so right now, uh, they're shooting for ADM 2.0, the new ADM 2.0, not the old ADM 2.0, uh, to, uh, to have these voice and video features. Uh, also, people are wondering about, what about ADM on the iPhone? Well, that'd be cool, because chatting on your iPhone, it seems like a great environment. The, the problem, the developers think, have, have, have reasoned that the iPhone SDK is technically NDA. Uh, non-disclosure agreement on the beta. 
So until Apple lifts that NDA, we can't release the source code that, have, that exposes the API that supports on the iPhone. So, but the GPL requires everyone to release the source. So until that restriction on that non-disclosure agreement disappears, I, it doesn't look like there's going to be any kind of iPhone idiot, which is sad. Finally, uh, there's been a lot of talk about using a distributed version control system over and above the uh, subversion version and in place of subversion. And a lot of arguments back and forth about this particular one. Uh, some people are saying, we don't need it, it's fine. Some people are consistent. Like, how do you live without this? They're going back and forth. And I'm sure this is just like I'm talking to an audience of mostly subversion people. And so I'm thinking that this is sort of like the, my friends talking about Macs versus PCs. Uh, but anyway, there's been no resolution and no decision on how exactly to proceed. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. If you want to have your voice, join the debate and and say, no, you fools. You don't switch. Or yes, it's a good idea. Yeah? Well, as a version guy, I have to say there's some really neat features in the distributed version control system. So if that's what, you know, each of needs, it's probably the right thing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what those features would be. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not an expert in any of this uh, sort of of software. However, uh, some people on the idiom list seem to be experts by the strength of their arguments. They say, <laughs> they say no, this is this is an absolute must. I mean, this is this is as vital as air. The mercurial is as vital as air or something. Well, have you, have you seen the uh, Fitz and Sussman talk on poisonous people? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah, well, part of the problem is that there are some communities where you've got a bunch of um, Testosterone so chest thumpers? I don't know. It's hard it's hard to judge. I mean, I haven't, I haven't met any of these people in, in person, so it's hard to judge. I mean, you can even hear it in the IRC channels. And being certain about something, sometimes it's a little Well, it's possible. <laughs> anyway, back to back to Adium. Uh, so for the moment, uh, 1.3, we're up to 1.2.5 something, 0.6. And uh, 1.3 is going to have a better Adding a meta contacts, so being able to have one contact for multiple protocols. Uh, better live contact searching. It's also going to include Facebook chat, but that's just a new thing just came out. And uh, that should be nice. 1.4 should do a better job of handling certain events and, and, uh, um, and status changes, which are sort of throwing things off at the moment. But we'll focus on that 1.4. 1 1.5, group chatting. If you use dating group chat, some people call it really awkward and really hard to use. So 1.5 is focused on trying to improve that experience. And finally, 2.0, as I've already said, should have a lot of voice and maybe video support. So uh, just to wrap up here, uh, I, I've been told I really have to say hi to a bunch of people. So for, for Augie, he'd like to say hi to Fitz, Sussman, and Troll, though I, they're not here. Um, also, uh, I'd also like to give a big thanks to David Smith, uh, Catfish Man, for helping me out. And your Jose Borzo also answered a lot of questions uh, in order to get into the development of this software. Uh, Evan Schoenberg, our lead developer, who's also been a big help. And of course, Leslie Hawthorne and Nathan for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk in front of you all. Um, so if you have any questions at all about ADM or any questions about sort of where things are going, then uh, feel free to ask them now. Thanks so much. Thanks. So you mentioned doing things with uh, the iPhone SDK. Um, has anybody thought about doing Android? I kind of have to ask if we're going on that. Um, I don't know if there's an NDA or, or what the deal with that is. Personally, my, my opinion is that the amount of work, ADM is so built into, and Coco, it is so happy in the environment to code it. It's so happy. And it does so many things for you. And it really helps you build a Mac OS X application that works and acts just like a Mac OS X application. It really follows the guidelines, and people expect certain things out of Mac programs. And it does a good job of supporting them. Android, being a totally different OS, right, is going to have it's going to be a hard time to, to say this completely Mac experience to port it to other OSs at all, including Android. So even though there might licensing issues might not be a problem there, the problem is going to be more sort of user experience. I'm reminded of when Apple ported Safari to Windows, and people complained about the font rendering. Do you know this on Windows? Everyone says, oh, the fonts are so blurry. And the, but, but to me, it's like, well, they look, they look fine. They look much better than those the Windows computers, which really distorts the fonts in this ugly way. So I mean, you're going to get into those sorts of arguments.
becomes user experience. So you'd have to do a significant rewrite of ADM to get it to work. So probably, probably not. Yeah, I so it was. Well, I call it ADM. This is a this is a this is a difficult. Like, I use ADM. Why is ADM? You 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 bring up an excellent point. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let me go back. Uh, here we go. So it was uh, used to be called Coco Aim. But uh, but that bird, that was the logo, oh, yeah. looked like a duck, okay. so they called it Amy Young CK because yeah. that was that was cool, right? Okay. That's, that's so cool, <coughs> and uh, it didn't, and the CK were quickly gone. Okay, but how did the original birds? See, it's like it's like aim and duck. Oh, See, they're like interwoven because it's. Because it's clever and it didn't, uh, <laughs> it didn't it. work. <laughs> so uh, the CK disappeared and then just as left as the ADM. I thought you were just adding this at first. Okay, I got it. I, I think it, I think it was explained to me, I and mean, this is this is hard, right? This is, I've been thinking people's you know, memories here, but I think they explained to me as a sort of like a duck in aim or something, but I, I don't that doesn't make sense to me. I have no idea why they decided to do that. I didn't know if it Someone was related did. to you know, I interestingly enough, there was all of the source, you know, when you're programming on Mac OS X, you always name your source file starting with the initials of the developer. So, you know, if I were to write a class, I'd call it MH something, which goes along with the Apple's MS something you know, for the next step. But, uh, and so in Indium, all the stuff is AI blah, pretty much, and for Atomizer, but now that means ADM. See, it's funny how that changes, but it's originally Atoms. So how many active developers do you typically have at one time? Uh, it depends on what's going on. Uh, recently, I was on IRC, and, and David Smith told me that it was a good day because four different developers had contributed completely different code a few times during the day. And it's almost like a push towards a new version, so which is sort of what's going on right now. So I think, I think there are really like 10 developers, and I think that they vary on their level of, of how much they contribute. The main developer, Evan, contributes like almost daily and does really awesome work. Uh, Peter Hosey contributes probably almost not quite as much. Uh, Colin Barrett also not quite as much, but still quite a bit. So they're, uh, they've got this really good core group of developers that, that keep it going. And they've got a lot of you know sort of side developers like myself who every so often step in and say, oh, hey, look, Apple's good bug, and they fix that. Uh, I love the big problem with the way font is rendered here and things that. So it's uh, it's really good. it's really good for people. When you were applying for summer of code this year, were you finding that um, you're able to find students for like your higher priority projects, or did you feel like you had to match them up with projects that were as higher priority? There were well, originally I applied to be a student this summer and uh, uh, also doing uh, unit testing. But they asked me if I would be a mentor instead so that I could help out. They had three excellent unit testing uh, applications. They didn't have a lot of excellent original ideas like they have in the past. So they pretty much they have this little wiki page that says, these are some suggested projects. And people just look at the suggested projects and really suggested some people of those. So I wasn't part of the whole, because I was a student at the time, not a mentor. I wasn't part of the whole deciding on which students to pick. So I can't tell you about what the applicant pool looked like. Uh, but from, what, from what I can uh, sort of infer, uh, unit testing was a big priority for a lot of people because the code could use some work. And it's really frustrating to fix something here only to have something else break right here as a result. So hopefully that will hopefully disappear after some serious unit tests. $200,000 active users or whatever, um, do you ask for or get donations? Uh, yes. Uh, you can donate on the web page. Um, we, we track users by their Sparkle downloads. It's an optional thing you can add, so I would like to be tracked. 
or not. And every time you download something, and every, uh, every time you upgrade, it sends that information to a server that keeps track of it. So if you want to get a good idea about what, how ADM developers are using uh, software, what kinds of platforms they have, what kind of you know, computers, that sort of thing, it's all available on the website, um, which I can probably pull up for you. So if I go to the go to the AD, oh you don't see it. If I go to the AD page, okay. Down here there's Sparkle statistics. And it will let me see a printout of gobs and gobs of people who are downloading the software. And by gobs, I mean, you know, gobs. So right now, hey look, it looks like we're up to uh, 300,000. Yeah. So anyway, it gives you an idea about who's using it and exactly what software, what platforms are using, what versions of the software they're using, all the way down. Quite quite detailed statistics. None of it's personal information, it's all stripped away. I'm one of these guys. I wonder who these people are. Anyway. So, uh, any other questions at all? Oh yeah, this is just free online. You don't have to have like special access, just you check this out, look at it. A lot of the stuff they do is very transparent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.